Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel now today We're reacting to another clip from Would I Lie To You And this is once again another mystery guest This is mystery guest Michael, recommended to me by Jack Carter So thank you very much for the recommendation And the stipulations behind this one guys We have got Diane Morgan's ghostly guy Bob Mortimer's campsite client and Lee Max Donkey Do Gooder. So, a lot of strange stories. Again, the last uh, mystery guest we did took me to hell and back. I had to get up, which I don't, <laughs> I don't do much. So, yeah, that was very um, surprising to see. But, no, guys, I'm very much looking forward to getting into this one. And if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and let's get into the reaction. And Welcome here we go, guys. Guest, Michael. Michael. Here he is. Right, we'll start with Diane. What is Michael to you? Uh, this is Michael. I once punched him in the face because I thought he was a ghost. <laughs> oh, wow, OK. Bob, how do you know Michael? This is Michael, and after cutting his hair, I got a job on a campsite as a hairdresser. <laughs> and finally, this sure. is your relationship with Michael. This is Michael. Together, we helped free a donkey that had trapped itself in the cubicle of a seaside toilet. Wow. That, now, that is crazy. <laughs> and what is it with Bob and qualifications? Dog messer, hairdresser... Where would you like to start? Um, well, Diane, where were you when you mistook Michael for a ghost? I was um, backstage at the Theatre Royal Bath. And, and what were you doing there? Uh, I was in a play. What happened? You were in the dark. I was, the I was in the wings. In the wings, getting to go on. And uh, I'd been told a ghost story about what? this. Where, that what? the theatre bath is is haunted. Okay. What was the story? Well, that the theatre was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> they said that about once a week, this ghost, a man mm. with white hair would float around the theatre. Understood. So then I'm standing in the wings, uh -huh. I turn round and I see... Well, I'm, I know it's Michael now, but at the time I thought it was the ghost because of the hair. Mm. And uh, I sort of inadvertently punched him. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was he wearing? He wearing quite dark clothes because he was, you know, working backstage. He looked right. like he was kneeling on some sort of prop. So he looked like he didn't have any legs. That's what made me think. I see. Oh OK. God, OK. So he, he sort of sidled up and knelt on something. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, I have slightly less sympathy for Michael now. I realise that what he did is he sort of crept up behind yeah. you and, and knelt. <laughs> <laughs> and slightly creepy behaviour. Yeah. Just a bit. I did ask him why he was kneeling on the bookcase. Yeah, but I imagine that at that point he was also asking you why you hit him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Did he answer you? Was he able to say why he was kneeling on there? Yeah. He said there weren't any chairs backstage. <laughs> Alright, who next? Okay, uh, Bob. Right, guys, what do we think? Like, um, I've never seen any of this Diane Morgan before, and um, same as the last one. The first person tells the story incredibly. Again, linked to the theatre. There is something strange happening here, guys. But, um, anyways, um, she's backstage, and she's heard a ghost story about someone with white hair, and uh, Michael is just uh, creeping up, kneeling on something. She spins around, sees him, bang. Um, I don't know, guys. I mean, it's one of them ones where it could be. It's, it is a crazy story, and she did tell it well, but it's just not jumping out to me. It's just not jumping out to me, guys. There just wasn't that much going on about it. Like, it is crazy. Like, the, if, if it is true, the guy got punched in the face by Diane. But it's just not jumping out to me for some reason. But let's carry on. We'll see what the other two look like. You cut Michael's hair, and this was on a, on a campsite. Yeah. How did you come to... Because you're not a hairdresser, are you? I'm a hairdresser, David. <laughs> so, you, you previously worked as a hairdresser, did you? I'm from a family. I'm the youngest of four boys. And in my family, the tradition is this, that the eldest is a priest. Then a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> the hairdresser right down the bottom. <laughs> so it fell to me to take 
pick up the scissors. Sure, sure. I was given my first set of scissors when I was 13. I actually had a pair of scissors when I was younger than that. <laughs> <laughs> Were you the first child? Yeah, no, no, it wasn't. It was more for, you know, cutting out bits of coloured paper. Oh, no, these were, oh, I see. These were Japanese steels. These were your sacks. Japanese right, steels. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you were given these hairdressing scissors at the age of 14. Yes. Had you undergone any further training or just were encouraged to experiment? Well, here's the rub, because Michael... Or oh, Mickey, you know, Mickey the drink. He's <laughs> <laughs> Mickey the Why is he called Mickey the drink? <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Understood. Anyway, so he was one of the first people that I ever gave a haircut to as a young boy. He was one of my friends. And then yeah. fast forward to 1982. I go to the World Cup in Spain. There was Michael, um, Billy the Pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> back with the names General again, Kent. back with the names. Paul Chops Johnson. Why is he called Billy the Pigeon? Oh, he's found his way home. No, he's a pigeon. <laughs> 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 well done, Lee, well done. They just link so well, them two. Chest. We all went to Spain. We were on the campsite for the England fans. I, as always, gave um, Mickey his haircut. And the one-man army from Nottingham, the Nottingham Forest fan, yeah. caused all the trouble out there. He demanded that he had a haircut. What trouble did he cause out there? Well, he, for example, he, he rushed to the cafe that we're in and threw a coin like that. <laughs> How could he? <laughs> could have damaged anyone. Luckily, yeah. it went straight in the slot machine and won the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> Like um, Michael Jackson's smooth criminal. Where he was thirteen. Again, so you, you'd cut his hair regularly. You first did when he was thirteen. When he's and 13, you were his, the first people you were his regular hairdresser. No, that would be a lie. But I would always cut Mickey's hair. Yeah. I was seen doing this, and before you knew it, over the course of the next ten days, I probably did fifty to sixty haircuts. <laughs> mm. Were you paid for these haircuts? I probably was, but in kind. Right. Oh, because no. <laughs> 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 Rob, don't take it there. The only thing any of these English fans could say was Wave or Solo. That and that got you an egg sandwich. And I seem oh, to wave remember solo. that people, because I was cutting hair, it was always in the morning that someone would bring me, oh, mate, you're busy cutting hair, you have a Wave or Solo. Yeah, okay. So, so you're paying in egg sandwiches? I think maybe I was. And you, and you, <laughs> and you did 50 haircuts over what, how many days? I think that was probably eight days. So okay. you're, you're getting, having 50 egg sandwiches over eight days. <laughs> <laughs> Just a so constant flow. The haircuts themselves. Yeah. Was there a signature style? It was the early 80s. Were there mullets going on? I mean, what was the look? Mm. It, was a it was a feathered look. I was expert. It was called, where I'm from, it's called the Foffa. You'll probably think of it, probably think of it like like Rod Stewart. Oh, it's a lovely okay. look. Uh, Layered mm. at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. Do you still cut hair now? Oh, not so much now, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> He's had too many egg sandwiches. I can't do the new cuts. No, it's the fashions change, Rob. Yeah, fashions change. The donkey. So, Lee, tell us. Right, guys, we need to talk about this because, my goodness, there's a lot of content here. Bob Mortimer's campsite client. Um, right, so the youngest uh, age, he gets scissors and he's doing haircuts. Not unbelievable. You can learn from a young age. And he, if it was a family tradition, I don't believe it like he said it, but if it was in his family that there's a history of hairdressers, I get it. So they go to Spain and for the World Cup um, and they're in the English campsite. Uh, the, the one thing I was thinking throughout all of this is why do 50 people get their hair cut in Spain having not got any cut before? Obviously, that's before my time, the 82 World Cup. I don't know how well we did in it. I don't know how long we were in the tournament for. But why would 50 people leave it this late to get a haircut? Like, are you getting your hair cut every, like, other day or something? That's the one thing I'm not believing about this. But, you know, when it's this unbelievable, it's often true. I believe it a lot more than the ghostly guy. But saying that, I'm probably going to come back. That's going to come back to haunt me. <laughs> I'm too funny. I'm too funny. Um, but, no, the campsite client, it's, um, I believe it more than the ghostly guy. But there are some things I don't believe. We'll leave it at that. Let's see about Lee Mack and the donkey on the beach. 
What's your story? I was at the seaside. I went mm -hmm. to... Whereabouts? Blackpool. When was this? This was last year, believe it or not. L last year? Only last okay. year since the last series and why yeah. it hasn't cropped up so far. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> On holiday, or were you summer seasoning? Or summer you seasoning? Doing a summer seasoning. In Blackpool. <laughs> Juggler. Or were you... <laughs> they have comedians in Blackpool. Or were you giving a keynote speech at the Conservative Party conference? <laughs> <laughs> or, or I was doing a summer seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was just—I was on a little weekend break. I decided to take my family to Blackpool. What sort of loos are these? Uh, public toilets on Blackpool seafront. So you go into the loo. Like port loos, loo, yeah. yeah. Where's to the use the toilet. Where's the donkey? Yeah. The donkey is in the cubicle. The door was shut. You're and I did kidding me. Underneath, and I just saw. <laughs> no way! No way! No way! No way! <laughs> <laughs> Which way? Which way in was he? He was he was actually um, facing outward, so the bottom was stuck in the cubicle. So and the no head way! Was out the no floor. way! So no way! In, did he? No, he didn't reverse it. The toilet reversed up to him. It <laughs> 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 turns out someone had witnessed this happen. Yeah. He'd gone into the toilet. Who, who is this person who witnessed this happen? It was some some guy was in there. Some other guy, not so Michael. There's a guy. And I, he, he goes, I tell you what's happened here. Yeah. This donkey, and what, what did he say? I walked in and I went, I went, blimey, there's a donkey stuck in the cubicle. And the man told us, this donkey has wandered in from the beach, you know, where they do the donkey rides, and then someone had used the hand dryer, and he's freaked, ran round, got disorientated, <laughs> in, <laughs> and then and reversed into a cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> was in there because the other fellow went out he said i'm not dealing with it i've got to go i'm just the one that's <laughs> here to explain this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not dealing with this one. i've just got a leopard out of the sink you can do this <laughs> so, he goes, uh, and the donkey's back end was literally stuck inside this inside the cube okay how did you get the donkey out i pulled i pulled the reins as hard mm. as he had reins that's why we knew he wasn't a wild donkey there's a lot of wild donkeys <laughs> And pulling at his reins like that, and Michael sort of tried to lean over the back, and he had his beach towel with him, and gently gave him a little, I wouldn't say a whip, that would be hard, but yeah. enough to make him mm. try and come forward. Uh, but yeah, yeah. it just didn't work. It just, we could not get this donkey out. Right. Uh, died. Ah. <laughs> 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 this was the right way in to use the loo. Yes, yes, perhaps he was using the loo. That's yeah. why he wouldn't come out. He needed the loo. Yeah. I Potentially. I say donkey, I mean fat bloke. I was a fat bloke. And I was just used to the donkey. I think it's one of those funny little flat bloke masks on the donkey. I was three months in Parkhurst. <laughs> Since we last did the show. So there we are. We need an answer. David's team. It is mine. Oh my god. This is oh what the oh my god. This is the most stupid story I've heard in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just changed and changed and changed. It's not a donkey. It's a man with a donkey head, and then he, he did three months in Vargas. Oh. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. A donkey. I don't think a donkey could walk backwards. I don't think it could get stuck in there, and to the extent where the door could be shut, where someone would open it. Um, I think the cubicle's too small. Um, it's a hilarious story. I just don't believe it. I don't think Lee would pull on the reins if the donkey's facing him in case it bites him or something. <laughs> that, was a, that was an incredible story, guys. But um, nevertheless, <laughs> what are we doing? Michael, Diane Morgan's ghostly guard by Mortimer's campsite client. I don't know. The, both of them... Diane Morgan's is the most believable... Bob Mortimer's is the one which has a bit of untrue in it, in my opinion. But saying that, Bob Mortimer is believable. I always have a good track record with Bob Mortimer. And they do look a similar age. They are, Literally, when he was walking out, I was about to say he does have a look of Bob Mortimer about him, funnily. You know what? I'm going to say it's Bob Mortimer's campsite client. Let's see who it is. Hey, cool.
Diane's ghostly guy, Bob's campsite client, or Lee's donkey do-gooder? Well, what do you think? See, I first, when I heard Diane's story, I thought that was a lie. And then I heard Bob's story, <laughs> <laughs> Lee's story, and then suddenly Diane's story seems a little yeah. bit more real. Um, I think it's Bob. <laughs> I think giving your man a haircut is the truth. 50 oh. haircuts in a week, paid in egg sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you can do that hairstyle with one pair of scissors. I'm from a family of hairdressers, and I just don't think you can do oh my Rod Stewart. Oh, family of hairdressers. Of scissors, Did so. you have more than one pair of scissors with no, you? No, my response to that, Nadia, is a family of not very good hairdressers. Oh. <laughs> two, two sets of scissors? He looks round about Bob's age. And Bob's haircut? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey did drink. Final chance. He looks to me like a man who hangs around gentlemen's toilets. <laughs> Lee, I, if, guys, if it's Lee's story, I will eat a box of Going tissues on my desk. Yeah. Going with Diane. We're settling. Diane. We're settling. Uh, David's Diane. team are saying yeah. that it is Diane. Come on, Bob. Michael, Come on, Bob. Please confirm your true identity. Uh, my name is Michael, and Bob gave me a haircut on a cancer. <laughs> it's too easy. What can I? What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I know him. Bob, me and Bob. Evidence of Bob cutting Michael's hair. There they are. Hey, that's. Oh, I like that. Well done. Well done, boys. <laughs> Guys, me and Bob Mortimer just um, we share the same mindset. I think that's. Um, I can't even remember, but I, I always seem to get it right with Bob. But there we go. Absolutely incredible recommendation, Jack. I don't think I've laughed. Pardon me, I've laughed that hard on a story in a very long time, Lee Max one. Um, but the thing is, just to show, no matter how crazy it can be, going to Spain, egg sandwiches, Mickey the drink, <laughs> it's a campsite client. But yeah, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for the recommendation. And as per usual, if you guys have any more, let me know in the comments section. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the next videos. Peace.